Uncle Rodis here again with more records. Fancy that. Um, I've had a bunch, well, it's been a couple of three weeks actually. Um, things have slowed down a wee bit. But I've had some mail calls arrive and I've had a couple of trips into town um, over the last couple of weekends. The first trip, the weekend, uh, last weekend. Uh, a couple of videos ago I mentioned that I got given a rather large collection of well, a large, just three boxes of records which I sifted through, took out what I was interested in, took out what Lynn was interested in, um, she took quite a lot of classical stuff out of it um, and I found a lot of other good stuff I think which I've already shown on that video. So what there was left was um, stuff mainly that I already had copies of and the stuff we didn't want and took them into the record shop and actually got a little bit more money than I thought. Uh, we did a straight trade with them. I mean, they're pretty good to me. I spent a lot of money there and they give me good discounts on, on my purchases. I mean, I, I'm not someone that just goes in and buys one record. I go and usually buy three or four or five or six at a time. So yeah, he gave me, uh, so you know, I ended up with getting three records um, for that swap and I mean I even talked him into taking what was left of the classical stuff which he wasn't going to but I told him I was just going to dump it um, and he actually gave me 10 bucks for the whole box so happy about that just to get rid of it so what I found there last week was some more ECMs now I picked up four records actually um, first one this one here um, Turgi Ripdal, I think that's how it says, whenever I, whenever I seem to be far away. ECM1045, um, I've had a quick listen to this, so I can't say too much about it, but it's got a strings, viol, viola, violin, and electric guitar, of course. Um, two fairly long extended pieces. Um, taking up each side with one shorter track on side one. Uh, yeah, can't say too much about that just yet. Haven't had a decent listen to it. Uh, yeah, I was quite pleased to find some more um, ECMs because you know I always keep my eye out, and so I picked up this one as well. John Sermon. This is from 1988, so it's a fairly more later one. Private City. Uh, is he playing solo on this? I haven't. Again, I've had a quick listen to it. Oh yeah, he's playing solo, but he's playing quite a lot of instruments. I can't say anything about the music on this right now because I haven't actually had a decent listen to it. Um, anyway, and then finally, the score of the day. Well, not yeah. I'll actually, I'll skip one first. This one here, I spotted. Now this is on Kiwi Pacific. This is New Zealand band, jazz band called Sustenance. This, uh, Anything I see on Kiwi, Kiwi Pacific Records, um, which is what this is, from 1982, 84, recorded in 84, I think it was released in 85. Uh, yeah, if it, anything I see from this album, I, uh, this label, I look at closely. If it's jazz, I'll probably buy it, and if it's New Zealand um, composed classical type music I will probably buy it they also did a lot of other stuff they did I mean there's quite a they, there were several Kerry Takanawa records that um, they had on this label which doesn't really interest me that much um, and a couple of records I've seen of New Zealand people doing uh, classical composers like Mozart's or Brahms or whatever that again doesn't really interest me that much but any New Zealand composers who are composing their own music like Douglas Lilburn or Jack Body and they did have quite a lot of releases which we are trying to track down and I had shown some before so sustenance was a guy called Phil Broadhurst who is a keyboardist a pianist has been around the jazz scene for quite some time uh, and yeah this is a good album I don't think it was, I don't like it as much as his latest Alp CD, which I just picked up not that long ago um, on Rattle Records. So, yeah, good score anyway. So, like I say, I'm always trying to snap up New Zealand jazz, so please about that. And then the third, fourth score I scored that day, which I have shown on the Facebook page, is this beauty here. And this was a, this was the score of the day. Uh, ECM 1027, Dave Holland, Conference of the Birds. 
and this record A is in absolute mint condition. I mean there is not a mark on the cover, there is a tiny tiny crease at one end which is no worse than what I end up getting in the mail. The vinyl is just breathlessly quiet um, and from all I can tell through looking up on EC uh, on Discogs that this is an original German pressing from the 1973 and it's just minty mint mint and it's just and well and musically I love Dave Holland Dave Holland he is a great great bassist and he, he writes some really great music and I have several CDs and other bits pieces from him and always always impressed so that is a score and a half really pleased awesome record and while I'm on the subject of Dave Holland, I'll jump ahead to yesterday. Yesterday, uh, again, I managed to get into the city, had some chores to do, um, partner was working, so I dropped her at work and spent the, the um, rest of the day in the city until she finished work. So while I was in the record shop killing a bit of time, and I wasn't actually really intending to buy anything, ha ha ha, yeah not. Well, anyway, I came across this in the jazz bins, and I was, I mean, as soon as I saw it was Dave Holland, I pretty much grabbed it, um, but I was a wee bit suspicious, because they only had $10 on the price, and generally these go from 20 to $50 for ECMs, depending on what they are. I mean, I paid, interestingly, I paid $30 for the Dave Holland Conference of the Birds, Whereas they've also got a copy of Garbarex, uh Afric Pepperland in there, which I bought from them quite a while back, which I think I only paid thirty or forty dollars for. They've actually got it for fifty bucks, um, so that was interesting. So uh, this was only ten dollars, and I'm thinking, hmm, okay, what's wrong with it? Well, a, it's got this big cut up on the top cover, which isn't. Um, the best thing. B, it's an American pressing as opposed to the original German pressing. Um, and well, apart from that, there's no other reason why it would be so cheap because the vinyl, once I cleaned it, and it, I mean, it looked pretty good in the shop, and once I got home, cleaned it, and it's playing perfectly. And this is it playing in the background right now. My suspicion of the cost of it is that it's actually just Dave Holland on the cello all by himself. Um, and you wonder what it's going to be like, that sort of thing. And actually, I really am enjoying it. Dave Holland doesn't seem to be able to miss a beat. Um, the album is from 1982. It's a full digital recording, actually. Um, 83, yeah. And I've listened to Side One, and this is my first listen to Side Two, but I'm actually impressed with what I'm hearing. So uh, I've got no complaints here. So it's a good score for 10 bucks. And then also. I was wrapped to find another ECM for a very reasonable price and one I'd never seen or heard of before. This one here, so Mick Goodrick, Goodrick, yep, yeah. and In Passing from 1979. So what is this, ECM 1139. Now again, this was only $10. Now the cover's the covers near perfect, the vinyl is absolutely, yeah, in mint, well, very good plus condition. Um, it's a German pressing, not an American pressing, so I was interested to think why would this be so cheap. Um, so I wasn't expecting a lot musically from it, but I am pretty impressed. Uh, Mick Goodrich is on the guitar, John Sermon plays, he's on the saxophones, uh, and Jack, Jack Dejeunette's on the drums, and a guy called Eddie Gomez on bass. So it's a pretty pretty stellar lineup, really, and musically I'm really impressed with it. It's not not the best one I've heard, but it's uh, nice music and uh, yeah, really good. Very impressed. So good score that. Now, also I spotted in the bins while I was there, uh, just in the new issue bins, this lady, Toshiko, Toshiko, yeah, Aki Yoshi. Now, I know she's a Japanese pianist. She's been around many, many years. This album is particular is from 19. 78 on Concord Jazz and it's called Finesse. It's a piano trio, um, bass and drums. I This woman had been, now she married someone and she went over to New York way back maybe 60s, in the 60s, and she married someone reasonably famous in the jazz world who I can't remember their name. 
And then later on, she married a guy called Lou Tarbuchin, Tarbuchin, who I quite I've heard some of his music. He's a saxophonist too. New saxophonist? I can't remember. Not never seen any of his records around to be honest. Very hard to find to come across. Um, not someone who's hugely well known, I think. But I liked his music. What I heard of it. You know, they these they they married. They, I think they were are still married or were still married up until I think he may have passed. They were they well into their 70s. And this woman has led a lot of big bands and all sorts of stuff. So I've heard some of her music. Pretty impressive. This one here, unfortunately, wasn't quite as good as I liked. It's pretty mellow, but it's nice. She, some nice playing on it. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Still good to have that. Then, finally yesterday, this one. This is the score of the day yesterday, to be honest. This is a New Zealand poppy, rocky... Progr prog progressive jazzy type band from 1970s. This is from 1973. This was Headband. This is their first album. Shit, what's the name of it? It's not called Headband. It's called. It's called. Come on, come on. Where's the name of it? I don't actually have the name of it at all on the record sleeve. It's called. I'm sure, I saw the name of it written here. It is happened. Headband happen out. That's the one. Happen out on Harvest on the Harvest label. It's actually a reasonably tricky album, rare album, semi-rare album to get your hands on in New Zealand. Um, all the copies on Discogs are going. There's four copies on Discogs going for over a hundred New Zealand dollars. Um, the guy in the shop said that he would probably sell a minty copy for about eighty dollars. I paid 20 bucks for it. The reason I paid 20 bucks for it is, I mean, the cover is reasonably tatty. The seams need a wee bit of gluing up. The record was really dirty, um, and there were some visible surface marks. I had a close look at it in the shop and decided, well, the, the fact that it was dirty was not an issue because I got a record cleaning machine and I can clean it up. But I was a wee bit suspicious of the scratches and the marks, but I had a look at them, and they look fairly superficial, and I know I've seen in the past some records that have got some pretty good marks on but have actually played well. So I get, took the punt for 20 bucks, brought it home, gave it a clean, polished up, looks pretty nice, still a bit suspicious about the, some of the, the, the um, marks, but have played it today and absolutely blew me out. Yeah, I mean, the music quality-wise, of the sound quality-wise, is just absolutely beautiful. It's clear as a bell. Yes, there's a lot of surface noise, Yes, it gets drowned out by the music most of the time, which is fine. And there were no obvious clicks and pops except for one very brief pop and jump at the end of the last song on side two, which the needle actually just sort of popped over and I'm not sure what happened there, but it didn't stick and it didn't, it wasn't too bad. So for that price, I'm pretty happy with it and it is a phenomenal New Zealand album. Absolutely stunning. I love it to bits. I knew all the songs in it. I have a CD with most if not all of this album on it, which was a compilation that they put out many years ago. Anyway, I better move on before my um, video runs out because I have a limited time. I'm not sure, I don't think I've shown these. These are the mail calls recently, mail deliveries, New Zealand music. Um, Civil Union, Seasick, Love Drunk. This is, uh, I think this is a Christchurch band. It was released on Melted Ice Cream Records, which is actually their very first vinyl release. They've released a lot of cassettes or quite a few cassettes by some pretty interesting local Christchurch bands. Um, so this is kind of slightly twisted indie pop. It's The first side's really good. Some of it sort of, I don't know, I haven't quite got into it yet. Um, next up, again, on Melted Ice Cream Records, this is their second vinyl release, Opposite Sex, Hamlet. This is their second album. It was out last year on CD and has been just released on Melted Ice Cream. Um... Print, through also dull tools, so it's printed in New York. I think it's made in New York. Um, yeah, there's the address for, Mel um, for uh, Melted Ice Cream, but there's also dull tools in New York, so I'm not sure whether they're the people who pressed it or what. Anyway, yeah, this is good. This is slightly more wild than their first album, which I have a copy of. Um, some pretty twisted stuff on here. It's some pretty good pop. The guy's a, a phenomenal guitarist, actually. Really, really like his guitaring. Yeah. And finally, in the vinyl this, this video, finally got my hands on this 
This is a New Zealand band called Street Chant and the album is called Haura. Haura. Haura? Not sure how you pronounce that to be honest. They're another really kind of top tier indie band in New Zealand. Um, there's three, a three piece, two girls, bass and guitar. Uh, the middle one is Emily and Ed Rosa, who is a singer, lead singer, and I think the writer of most of the music. And she really shreds the guitar. I actually picked this up at their concert. They're they're actually splitting up. This is their second album. Their first album's pretty cool. I don't actually have it, but I have heard it. Um, they are splitting up, going on tour, doing a tour. Went to a gig on Thursday night. Picked this up. Finally, I had been thinking about it for a while. It took a wee while to grow on me. But actually, there's several songs on here that could end up being New Zealand classics over time. You know, some really nice guitar licks, some really nice guitar melodies. Nice song. She's, you know, she's not a bad singer. And she does sound a bit like a guy. It was a bit hard when I first heard it to just realise that it was a woman singing. But um, they've been nominated for several awards, I think, songwriting awards, which is pretty cool. But in saying that, you know, a band of that reason well, for New Zealand standards is a fairly high, high profile band still only gets 40 or 50 people to their final gigs um, which is probably part of the reason why they're, they're saying goodbye anyway glad to have that also earlier in the week we went to a gig for a jazz a jazz gig here in Christchurch or in Christchurch um, a guy called Reuben Bradley I'd never heard of him before but it turns out he's on Rattle Records so I would have got round to buying some of his records as I worked my way through their catalogue while I was at the gig I picked up this CD, which was his first one, called Resonator, and this one called Mantis, which is uh, kind of a tribute CD to a very close friend of his who was a bass player who died not that long ago, and this is most of the music that he had written and then, and then recorded and adapted by Reuben Bradley. Um, two great CDs, really impressed. The, the, gig, the, the jazz gig was absolutely awesome, really liked it. Um, took my partner and she really really liked it too which she's not a huge jazz fan but she did certainly like that so that was pretty cool so we've had a, we've had a good week I've been to two or well, three gigs actually went to a concert last night um, Christchurch Symphony Orchestra can you believe my first ever classical music concert really enjoyed it the, the reason I went was that they did a they did a version well they did play Frank Zappa's G-Spot Tornado uh, and that was the whole purpose and reason I went uh, for three and a half minutes. But I did enjoy the whole concert mostly, although I did sort of get a bit bored with some of the Mozart stuff they played. Yeah, it's got, but it is it's certainly a unique and interesting and very cool experience seeing that sort of stuff live. Probably the best way to listen to it. I thought the sound was quite phenomenal actually. The quality of the sound in the hall and the auditorium was really cool. It was at one of the schools in Christchurch. Um, actually, got another one coming up soon. Um, for the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra doing some Terry, uh, not Terry, yeah, Terry Riley, Steve Reich, not Terry Riley, doing some Steve, yeah, so anyway, that's me for now, um, I keep saying I'm going to stop buying vinyl for a bit because I've got far too much to get through and listen to and, you know, try and save some money for other things, but you know, I never do, so, see you again next time.